Hi guys, I'm Ian from Boards and Sword Hobbies and welcome to our unboxing slash preview of Warlord Games Victory at Sea. Uh, this is a store demo copy we've got, so we thought before we start painting up and stuff we'd unbox it and show you guys what's what. Yeah. Let's get down to the table. Hi guys, welcome back. So this is Warlord Games' new uh, game to be released. Victory at Sea. This is a World War II naval engagement game. It's um, one, eight one in 1800 scale, so quite small. If you've played Black Seas, that's one in 700. So anyway, that's about two and a half times the size. So it gets you a rough, rough idea. This isn't the first rendition of Victory at Seas. They used to be by Mongoose Publishing. Um, it's quite old. This is now out of uh, print and stuff. So from what I've heard, this is just a reprint. Uh, they've kept most of the rules the same. So let's dive in. And you see, it's typical Warlord games. Beautiful, full colour. Um, as I said, it's 1800. One in 1800 scale, so the ships are quite small. Um, in the starter set, we have... Um, cruisers and destroyers i believe yeah so we have the there's a destroyer and a cruiser from the the japanese um the usual templates and stuff that we've come to know and love from warlord games so you get everything you need um plenty of diagrams and stuff so on the ship cards which i'll show you in a minute there is all your different so every Every weapon has its own firing arc and stuff, so lots to think about when you're playing. Um, but if it's anything like the Mongoose one, it is quite a simple game, per se. Um, but yeah, all your modifiers, obviously, if you're at point blank range, easier to hit. If you're short, long gets harder, extreme range, um, stuff like that. So even if you're targeting the destroyer, I use it as a smaller ship. It gets harder. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward at Board and Swords to getting this in and getting the models painted, doing some demos. We'll probably do a how to play video on this so that if anybody is thinking of getting into it, they can have a demo first if they want. So um, they've also aircraft in the game. I don't know if we've got any that's been sent now, but... Um, there is aircraft. We don't have a carrier, but they are coming. I think they're coming separate, or they might be also be in the uh, fleet boxes. So it's something to look out for. Um, obviously, dogfighting, so aircraft can attack each other. If you're trying to protect your ships, all to do with wind for the aircraft. Right, then on to... So essentially there's there's one main scenario. It's got War at Sea. Um, and you roll 2d6 to see what your objectives are. Um, but what I did find in this, I couldn't find any points values or fleet lists in this booklet. But I don't know if this is just like almost a getting started rule book that's just going to be in the the start the two-player starter set, which is Japanese and United States. So I don't know if they're going to bring out a thicker rule book because the, the, the old Mongoose one is much thicker. Um, the Mongoose one didn't have points values, but this does refer to points values in this book. So we're not sure. Here we go. Look. So the USS Idaho is 400 points and Yamoto is a thousand so there's points for the special named ships here but then there isn't any fleet lists in this booklet so i assume they will be coming later in a different booklet but as you can see we have special rules for the u.s navy imperial japanese navy we've got the royal navy the kriegsmarine which are germans and then the regia marina which are italians um there's also Marine Nationale, which is the French Navy. However, there isn't any French or Italian coming out from the launch. Um, it's just the first four. 
So Germans, British, Japanese, and US. So they've already done all their, their special um, national rules, per se. And uh, each one has a named ship. Obviously, there's no hood, which is a shame. On to the construction. So we've got the, the US Navy and the Japanese Navy. And then as all good Warlord games, there is a, a cheat sheet, a reference on the back. So you, once you get used to the game, you'll pretty much be just using the, the back of this booklet to get most of the rules correct. So these are the destroyers for both nations. So that's a Japanese one. And that's an American one. So if we have a look. So as you see, they they are based on what some people would argue is quite a thick base for the size of the model. However, it does mean that they've been able to name them down the side, which I think is quite a nice touch. But I don't know, they, they do look a bit thick. But then they, they are playing pieces. It means you don't have to handle any of the the guns and stuff once it's all assembled. Don't know if we'll be able to get this to focus. There we go. Obviously it's some flashings on top. And then there's some nice detail on the base as well. That's one destroyer. And then this is the American, the Fletcher class destroyer. <laughs> Nicely detailed, you see the, the lifeboats on the sides. That's the other side. Again, nice crisp moulding of the actual ship. Not too much to clean up. It's a bit around the base to clean up. but So, some of the cruisers do have some warp in to the base, but it's, it's to be expected with a, a resin model. Um, there we go, so this is the Northampton class cruiser. Again, nice crisp lines on the actual model. See, the detail on that base makes me think that once that's painted up, that will look quite nice. And again, you can People have got the mad skills to be able to do a bit of um, rigging, potentially, to put the pennants on and whatnot. So there we go, look, so it's the USS Northampton 1942. That's just, it's a nice touch having the names and classes on the side. Um, this is the same one, so it's a Northampton class cruiser, and this is a USS... Come on, we focus. There we go, USS Chicago. So it's the same model, but just a different name. So it's again, it's a nice touch that they have chosen to name them. Let's have a look at the Japanese cruises. But it could be that the the points and army lists well, fleet lists for these are essentially, they're just going to be on the, the stack cards, because I do believe they have the models on them. Uh, so it's the guns, and we'll have to find out what you call them. I want to say antenna, I don't think it is. But there we go, so you've got the turrets, and then there is the model. So it's a Megami class cruiser. Again, nice crisp detail. Look at that. From an aerial perspective, it does look beautiful. It'll look good with all the turrets on. And this is Kimeno, 1944. Beautiful. And the last one, it's the same, same class, but this is Maya Magami. 1939. Again, nice crisp molding. Wonderful. 
and it's just a little bit of warping but again a little bit of hot water that will get that out so we'll get these painted up over the next couple of days as always a beautiful cardstock punch nice colors all the tag um markers you need i believe the this one is just the initiative marker so who's who's going first um, so this is the turning gauge a little bit different from some of the others but i believe so you align the bridge maybe this is for the the smaller one yeah this is for the destroyers i believe so align the bridge like that and then that's how you turn so by turning there see that is your 45 degrees so align with the bridge and let's go like that there we go it's quite free form a little bit different to the other games the, the naval games have been bringing out but, um, and a, a thank you to Morella she's packed all our our demo stuff for us because yeah black seas and cruel seas use a different movement template but um like i said this is more of a, it's an established game over like the others were their own design kind of thing so as you can see here look it does have the points so maybe you just build a list out of what you have kind of thing. So you've got your different refits. There's like a slightly different, so it lets you know what guns you can have on it. And you've got all your different stats, so we can learn together on one of the next videos. Because we haven't got any aircraft, so at least we don't need to worry about the more confusing rules. So I'll put that into one side. So that was for the Japanese destroyers. Let's have a look at a Japanese cruiser. So these are 280 points as opposed to 50 points for the de destroyers. You see a lot more weapons. These had massive eight inch guns, loads of torpedoes. Nice, printed on nice, good cardstock. Uh, so ships in this class, so there's four different ones. So you get two in the star set. Well, in this demo anyway, at least. We'll have to have a look at what game and the others. So they're not named on these per se. But at least the ships are named, so arguably that's a nice touch. On to the American fleet. So there's the first one. So this is one of their destroyers, so they're 60 points. So their destroyers are more points. But as you'll see in a minute, their cruisers are... A lot cheaper but that's due to the fact that the American cruisers have no torpedoes whereas these destroyers do have torpedoes so they'll be it's quite cool that they can be used in different different ways on the on the board then there we go so there we go there we go guys that was a, a look at uh, Victory at Seas, the new game from Warlord Games. This is just a demo, uh, but once um, we're all painted up, we'll be posting on Facebook, back on here and stuff. We'll do how to plays on here, we'll have a quick run through the rules, and then once it's in the store, we can do live demos with people. That's good. Cheers, tune in. Thank you. Bye.